<clears throat> Hello, Denise. Morning, Joanne. I had to turn my heat on this morning. There was frost on the pumpkins. And I don't even have pumpkins. Interesting. I swear I checked allowed users to unmute themselves on the thing this morning. Allow participants. Oh, I unchecked it. Whoops. Only had one cup of coffee. I apologize. Okay. People can unmute now. Sorry. If you don't want me to talk, just tell me, Paula. It's cool. Oh, yeah. It's wrong with I am so, so no, no, please. I don't want to be the only one talking. I was a little mm -hmm. confused. I'm like, gee, I fixed that. I I unchecked it. I yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Anyone it's who a, wants to talk, please do. <laughs> it's a Tuesday that feels like a Monday. It's a Tuesday, Monday. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I am going to brag a little bit, though. It's a Tuesday, Monday, and at the end of this week, I am on vacation for two whole weeks, back to back, like together. I don't think I've ever done that, Joanne, since I've worked here. So it's going to be amazing if I can get through this these four days. I never did it. I didn't dare because Susan did it once and she didn't want to come back. So. Well, I may not want to come back, but <laughs> I've got a great team who can handle anything. So if I don't come back, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Donna didn't say no. <laughs> oh, yep. It's definitely a day. I started out with a meeting at 730 and then had to rush to the 830. And now I had a few minutes before the 10. So, you know, it's just one of those days. And then there's an 11. Uh, okay. All right. We got this. The afternoon looks, oh, no, I'm not going to say it out loud. Never mind. Yeah, I'm actually in 7.30 meetings three days a week, Joanne. And I don't, I'm not a fan of like anything before 8.30. I know, because you don't have time to get your coffee. Exactly. You understand. Um, you're recording. So what do you do with the recordings for the meeting? So I can tell folks yeah. who ask me. We're working on it. So, oh, okay. yep. Um, we haven't started recording yet, have we? Mm -hmm. Oh, we have. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so Where's we are. My... Hi, Maria. We are working. <laughs> we are working on um, getting. Um, what's it called again, people? Uh, that place that you go to watch videos. The YouTube uh, channel. YouTube channel. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> wow, I really have only had one cup of coffee, and that is not working. 
I apologize. Um, yes, so we have to have YouTube to post. Uh, we are working on getting that set up through our people. We had it before, but apparently it's there's a new process now. And so uh, we are the first thing we're trying to get done quickly as quickly as possible, and it's already been it's already not quickly is the all day meeting that we did. We are working on splitting that up into segments and then posting those as YouTube videos on our training site. We are going to be updating our training site hopefully within the next couple of weeks. That's our that's our goal and post all of these meetings there uh, as well as uh, the, the one that from that all day meeting. Um, in the meantime, I think for this for today's meeting, I can give it to you as a make it available to you after the meeting, Joanne, and you can then distribute it as as needed until we can get postings going. If you're okay with that, okay, great, thank you. Absolutely, yep, that's okay. great, thank you. Yes. All right, I've, I'm going to give a few more minutes to see if other people are going to be joining us. Um, trying to think what else I wanted to bring up. I do have a question, Joanne, that I want to pose to the group as well as to your bigger group that just came over um, in a Teams chat regarding hourly employees because this brings up an interesting question about who's hourly and who isn't. And I'm sure everybody in the districts are already wondering this. It may require going back to the legislature and needing a little more guidance before we get to that level of funding for AKA ED 974. I mean, LD, excuse me, LD. All right. Um, oops. I clicked on breakout room. I don't want to break out. All right. We're going to go ahead and start. Um, for those of you who um, are joining us, thank you very much. This is our monthly uh, office hour um, or office 50 minutes, however you want to look at it, uh, for the school finance and compliance team to meet with uh, school business officials to discuss whatever's on your mind uh, within, obviously, certain limitations, please. Um, I'm just going to my team uh, who are able to be here today, we're going to have a brief introduction and then just do some reminders about uh, things that you should be aware of that are coming up quickly. Um, and then we will open it up to questions. Uh, so the first thing I want to mention is uh, welcome to October. Um, turned my heat on today. There was a little bit of frost out. So this was the first day though. I think I did pretty good waiting until now. Um, hope you're all doing great and enjoying the fall. We have had a great summer, and so I'm really looking forward to a wonderful fall. Um, I hope you are, all are as well and that things are going well in your schools. Uh, I know there's a lot of crazy stuff, but we are in October, so, so that means October 1 has come and gone, and October 30 is coming quickly. And you all know what that means, the collection of data so that we can calculate funding, for the next fiscal year, which is FY26. And that is going to be obviously the biggest um, issue right now, I think, for all, many of us to ensure that the calculations uh, are done properly. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm just going to quickly point out something uh, that I want you to remember and be aware of. And that is on um, the help desk pay, uh, web page. Uh, they have posted October reports that are due. I'm going to put this in the chat so that everyone can see uh, where they are. And then we can talk about what's upcoming in a minute. I want to give my team an opportunity to say good morning. And then if they have anything that they want to remind you of, uh, I would like to give them the opportunity at now at that now at this time so i'm going to start with denise if you don't mind denise just say good morning and if you have something you want to remind our partners in the business offices of i can't hear you denise no and still no um 
maybe it didn't switch over to your audio when you joined the Zoom meeting. I can give you a minute and we can start with Alyssa. Okay, Alyssa. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa Kenny. I'm your point of contact for audits and things of that nature. Um, I hope you all are doing well this morning. Uh, the only thing I would remind you of is that today is the deadline for the EFS 07. Um, the hard cutoff is November 1st. It's a Friday. So if you haven't gotten that completed or you have questions, let me know. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you, Alyssa. Denise, real quick, have you been able to resolve? No. Okay. Uh, Maria, I'm going to go to you real quick. Do you have anything you want to remind us? I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Libak, and I am the coding uh, guru. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, th there's still a lot of schools that haven't uploaded their actual files for the fourth quarter. Um, if you have already uploaded them, thank you. Um, if not, please make it a priority. Priority. Um, the files need to be reviewed, approved, and in migrated status by November fifteen. Um, and we will send out a list of schools that haven't submitted their reports soon. Right, uh, Paula. That is correct. Yes, thank you, Maria. And I just <laughs> want to add on to that. Uh, thanks, Joanne. Um, yeah. um, I just want to add on to that. Uh, why is that important? Because we have to have that information in order to calculate the FY26 funding. Uh, so I realize many of you have not had your files audited yet. We are not looking for audited files. We need uh, up as you know the updated files as best they are to date, and, but they have to be in the migrated status. So it's not just uploading, it's allowing us to review, allowing, and then you ex, uh, you uh, do the accepting or whatever it is that you do on your end. And I'm speaking because I don't know what I'm saying, uh, but then I do know the final part, as Maria said, is migrating, migrated status, or we cannot pull them out of the system in order to use them for the calculation of EPS funding. So it's extremely important that over the next, um, you know, 15 days, you get these in and uh, so that we can use them properly and calculate funding appropriately. And yes, we need that even if you are considered a minimum contributor, it matters for the entire calculation. So please, no matter what SAU you are or how big or small you are, we need that information uploaded into our MEF system. Thank you for that reminder, Maria. Um, Denise, we, have you had any luck? Yeah, better. Yes. Okay, good. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, I just want to remind everybody about their budgets. Um, I am a little bit behind on two to three weeks out, but I still encourage folks to upload your budgets, provide the backup to me, because when I get on a tear, I can, you know, move through them. So I can't do them if I don't have them. So just if you haven't done that already, please. Um, upload the stuff, send uh, back up via email or upload, and I will get to them just as soon as I can, um, plugging through daily um, between budgets and assisting folks. So send them along so that we can uh, get those actually in migrated st uh, status as well. Those are the FY25 budgets. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Uh, Ms. Pam, do you have anything you want to remind our business partners? I I am Pam, and I am the help desk uh, for school finance. So if you have any questions, you feel free to call me or email me, and I will make sure if I can't answer the question, I will get you to the right person so you get your updated, accurate information. Um, so feel free anytime to email me with anything. Thank you. 
FYI, PAM is also the main contact if you need any updates to your vendor code information. For instance, the contacts for your uh, direct deposit, for your uh, address, if, if a vendor code change needs to be made. We are unable to uh, pay make payments if there's a change to your address or your uh, that has not gone through the system. Uh, the system is going to kick it back if things don't match when we when we submit payments. So please make sure that all of that information is up to date. And if you need help with that, Pam is the one to, to reach out to. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Paul. All right, Donna, I left you for last because Donna is the new uh, person who's calculating the EPS funding. So she's going to be um, very interested in all of the data collection. So I'm going to let her speak for a few minutes. Yes, I am Donna Tyner, and I've been with the team a little over a year, so I probably talked to at least most of you on the call this morning. So yes, I'm going to reiterate the data importance for um, the EPS calculation. We, as a reminder, we need everybody's data before we can begin the calculation, and the timelines to get the data in, to do the calculation, to get it approved, take it out to the legislature, the commissioner, all those folks that need to look at it and um, get it out to you for February so you can do your budgets. So we need you to help us so that we can help you. I guess it's the circle of life there. Mm -hmm. And um, the more eyes on your data that you can have to look for accuracy is the best process. And if I reach out to you, ask you questions to verify, Please know I'm not questioning you. I am not um, trying to bother you or bug you. I just want to make sure we have everything as correct as possible so we get you the money that you are due in the formula. That I guess sounds, that's it. Sounds very familiar. Awesome, Donna. <laughs> that's great. Great job. Donna will also be presenting at the uh, fall conference for Maine School Management Association, uh, a... Um, workshop regarding the ED279 calculation, uh, EPS calculation. So uh, Donna and uh, Ida Batista will be there as well. She's not here today, uh, but they will be there. So please, you know, if you have questions or if you would like more information, that is a great option. Um, one thing I wanna put out there before I open it up to any questions in the field, I just had an interesting Teams message about staff data. We are starting to gear up to prepare for the, and I'm sure you are as well, for the um, minimum hourly minimum salary requirement for hourly employees and ed techs that was just passed this last year in the legislature. It doesn't take effect in FY25, thankfully, but it does take effect in FY26, which of course, as you know, we are getting ready to calculate now. So we need to have an understanding of what that might look like. Um, so what was interesting is when we were reviewing this, uh, the, under the expectation that we had were that hourly employees, because the bill talks about ed tech specifically, and then it talks about all other hourly employees. Our assumption at the time was that hourly employees included um, bus drivers, uh, custodians, um, perhaps administrative staff, uh, school uh, 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 lunch uh, lunch workers, that that type of um, demographic. However, in looking at um, information in our um, staff data report. It looks like, and I'm going to copy this list, there's a, a bigger list of those that are hourly employees. And so um, I'm, I'm not sure where to go with this. And so I'm just asking for some input as you think of it. It doesn't need to be today. Um, uh, if, if any of you have any of these um, employees as hourly, if you could let me know. Um, just trying to get a good sense of who the hourly employees employees are, because uh, again, that minimum salary is going to apply to all other hourly employees. And so I just want to want us to be prepared want, and want you to be prepared so that we know exactly what it is we're looking at. So that was all I wanted to speak about today. Um, who has any questions or information that they want to share from all of you wonderful people that have joined our meeting. 
And if you do, feel free to raise your hand or go on unmute yourself, which I think I have made available now. Uh, if you want to come on camera, great. If not, that's okay too. Or you can write in the chat. And if nobody has anything to say, I'm going to assume that everything is just going great. Your staff and student data are being entered without issue. The help desk has been very helpful. Uh, and you all appreciate, because we appreciate the work you're doing. So apparently you don't need any help. Come on, somebody wants to say like something. Lisa has a question. Who does? I'm sorry. Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hola. I have a question. Um, it's just a coding question. Okay. That's okay. Not, not absolutely to do with what we were talking about. Um, if we paid a stipend, for example, we pay a stipend twice a year. So, for example, we paid a stipend um, in September. That would mean in October, we have to pay Maine State retirement fees and that other health fee that no one really knows what it is. So there's two expenses that happen in October that have no corresponding salary. So they error out. Now, yeah, it was, so I go to upload reports and it'll say error. You have benefits with no corresponding salary. Hmm. Okay, so I, I, I it's fine with what I upload to you guys. I fudge it into, I don't know. Did I just say fudge? Okay. Um, okay. But um, this situation happened with a grant, and I don't want to do that with a grant. And the grant invoice got uh, denied. So how do I post it? <laughs> no? Um, Denise, are you able to help so Lisa, what's, you know, if it was a different fiscal year that your benefit hit outside of the salary, that would be a little bit different. But if you're talking about September and October, it's in the same fiscal year. The big thing about that is that the coding must be exactly the same as your salary line with the exception of the object code. So if you paid a salary in September, and then you go and you pay this expense related to, you know, workers' comp or whatever, in October, that's okay. But your expense in October needs to be coded exactly the same as the salary line. Um, and so if you wanted to, uh, it, it's going to recognize that salary line and tell you you don't have a benefit line, right? Because that's what you're saying, right? Because it's a different yes. So in this case, you would placeholder it, put a penny in there, as the benefit line. And then when your October benefit hits, you're going to code it exactly like your salary line. Um, and it should already have a salary line that it can hook to. But if you have, if you struggle with that, Lisa, connect with me individually and we'll work through it. All right. And what happens if it's between fiscal years? Maybe that's what happened. Well, the same thing. You're going to have to placeholder it with a penny. There's, the system will not allow a salary or a benefit to go through without each other. And we do right, recognize so, that expenditures sometimes happen after. Okay, so I need to post a penny for the salary and then the main state retirement will go through. Right. Okay, even in a grant. Yeah, the only way it's gonna happen because um, like you said, you you have your salary, but you, a stipend should have a few benefits, really. Um, right. So I don't have this. I have the benefit. I may say retirement benefit, but no salary. Right. So then you would put in a penny for the salary with the okay. same exact. Because you truly do have your salary. We're not trying to skirt around the corner anywhere. You you truly have your salary. It's yes. just a different quarter. All right. I'll give it a whirl. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for that question, Lisa. I'm sure other people have come across that too. Uh, somebody asked in the chat if uh, if the list I provided, if we are asking um, if any of those are hourly. Yes, that's what I'm asking. Uh, oh, Zach put in um, information. Most of that list is covered under our teaching CBA salaried. Okay, so that's your contract. 
Right. That's that was the confusing part. Some some of these staff on my on this list have have appeared in our system as hourly. And so perhaps it's an error. And that's what I'm trying to understand. Maybe they were submitted in NEO staff as an in error as hourly. And so that's what I'm trying to understand. So I was just asking for some feedback so that I can then give feedback to our data team to look into it further. Is it likely being an error? Uh, so that's that's what I was looking for. Thank you for your for your help in that. And so we don't need the I don't need the information now necessarily during this meeting. But if you can, if you want to send me an email separately or whatever uh, to let me know if there are any on that list that that would be considered hourly, great. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that these are in error in our system, and ask uh, the data team to outreach. So that being said, here's another request with the data collection this year. Uh, if you could speak to all of your uh, data entry people to ensure, here's another reason that, that it's going to be extremely important that the data collection for staff be very carefully put in this year because we're going to be comparing, we're going to be using the data collection this year to ensure that we are getting the information correct for the next year's um, uh, adjustment that is being uh, that is being that is part of the the statute that in the FY26 year, and I'll I'll explain this a little bit too because I know there's been some questions about this. For the hourly salary requirement for ed techs and hourly staff, for the minimum requirement, the state is providing an adjustment to all SAUs if the minimum salary is not being met. Uh, for the difference between the min the new minimum salary in the FY26 year, so this will be next July, after next July, whatever that minimum salary is, plus the percentage, which will be determined next, next January, um, the difference between the minimum salary and what's actually being paid in the FY26 year. So is the adjustment that SAUs will receive to help them get to that minimum in that first year. It's only the first year that this is happening. This is similar to a minimum salary adjustment that was done uh, when the $40,000 minimum teacher salary uh, was put in place. Uh, that was over a three year period because you had three years to get up to the new minimum. Each year there was a new minimum assigned. Um, so it's similar to that. And what we're using to for the data to compare is we're going to use the counts that we are collecting next October and November from each SAU for all of the staff. We're going to use that data that we're collecting on the actual hourly salaries of, of your hourly staff and ed techs that we will be collecting in NEO staff. The day that we freeze it to use for the EPS calculation is that day that we're freezing the staff data as a point in time to say, okay, here's what the minimum should be. Here's what, every, here's what the staff are getting paid at this time. And here is the difference. And any difference is what an adjustment will be provided to each SAU if there is a difference. Uh, and I, I know that's, that's not clear. It's, about, it's clear as mud, I know, uh, but that's the plan and so it's going to be extremely important that we have the information properly in the staff system, NEO staff. We're not taking this from your payroll system. That doesn't help us. We don't have access to that. So we need NEO staff updated properly. Uh, let's see. I hope that was clear. And if not, please let me, let me know if you have questions. Joanne, was that clear? You look a little confused. So um, the question is, and I was just trying to pull up the enacted legislation. If the enacted legislation requires the SAUs to pay the hourly folks the wage stated in the enacted legislation for the 25 26 year, mm -hmm. they will be paying that in next October's data. So there's Hopefully. no adjustment. Well, there's only an adjustment if they aren't. But they're required under law to pay it. So they're, they're, they're okay Correct. to be out of compliance with the law. As that's you know, a, that's not I something know. we oversee. That's not our area of, we don't, 
So yeah, I mean, no, they shouldn't be out of compliance with the law. So, so then there's no adjustment. And I think that's going to be a German Woodson thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm pointing out to you that that's the question in the field, the concern. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've had this conversation and the best I can answer as you, as you are well aware is it is not up to the department of education to, um, uh, ensure that SAUs are, are meeting that requirement of the law. Um, however, there was a, I don't know, I can't say why they put that in the legislation to allow for an adjustment and also to have a law that requires them to meet a minimum. It, it to me, it, it, doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's what we're doing. And so if there are any SAUs at that time that are not meeting it for whatever reason, it's, we will provide an adjustment. I, and yes, Drummond Woodsum should probably, uh, they have a, I believe they have something coming up this week, don't they? We uh, do on Friday. And I, I think, you know, they're not going to want to advise their clients to be out of compliance with the law by any means absolutely i wouldn't want to advise that either so somehow i think there's going to be more to come on this legislation (laughs) yes agreed (laughs) so i guess what i'm saying to you is to my to the best of my understanding and how we're interpreting it here speaking to our uh legal counsel as well this is the plan on our side how to deal with the, the part that we have been um tasked with in in meeting that adjustment requirement if an adjustment is necessary yes so adam's comment in the chat right so but then you will have inaccurate staff data if the field reports what would have been instead of what is To get the, yeah, to get the adjustment, you would be lying, Adam. And I never suggest lying or Adam's not going to lie. (laughs) Right. So that isn't what I would recommend. So I, I, I don't have a good answer. Uh, Yeah. I I don't think that we'll report incorrect data, but I think it just highlights the point that we're going to need Drummond Woodson or whoever to bring some clarity to this crazy situation. Agreed. And I will reach out again to our AG and see what what they can help with. Uh, because the more we think about it and the more we plan for it, the the more questions come up about this doesn't this just seems odd. Um, now granted there are, you know, there's speed there's laws about speeding and if you speed you get a ticket. Uh <laughs> but you're not supposed to break the law either. So this is weird. They're, it, it's almost like they're encouraging SAUs to break the law. And so that makes no sense uh, because it, people are like, well, how do I get the adjustment? Do I have to not? And I'm like, I guess I, you know, I can't say that. So I apologize for that. I wish I had better understanding myself. This is why I consider us partners in this, by the way. And I said that, I don't know how many times this morning when we first started talking, uh, that we are partners in in all of this to try to figure it out. Uh, because as you know, we we don't make the laws either, but we have to help uh, enforce isn't the right word. Um, and I can't com- uh, ensure people, uh, districts are in compliance. So. Um, not very helpful. I apologize. Anything else anybody wants to bring up in our, we still have 20 minutes left in this meeting time. If anybody else has other things to discuss. Hey, Paula, it's Adam again. I have a quick question that I just thought of. Um, Yeah. Is there any, um, in the 279 formulas for next year, is there any accounting for the new paid family medical leave half a percent that everyone's going to have to start paying? I'm afraid not. Yeah, that's what I figured, but I just wanted to check. Yep. The um, I'm assuming that would be part of the benefits percentages that are in the formula. Um, Ida's not here to reinforce my assumption. Uh, but no, those have not been adjusted. But they are a percentage. Um, so... Yeah, sorry. There's no additional funding for that requirement. 
Okay, thank you. In fact, there are no changes to uh, the ED-279 calculations um, from last year, other than whatever we come, whatever the calculation determines the new mill rate will be. And of course, uh, the, new percent, the new percent for inflation factors. Um, those are the only things that adjust without statute change um, on a regular basis based on specific calculations in statute. But there were no adjustments to the formula uh, from last from the last legislative session. Anybody else? I don't want to prolong things, but I also don't want to cut anybody else off. If there's anything else they have questions about. Anybody enjoy seeing the the uh, Northern, Northern, what were they called? Northern Lights. I missed them. Went to bed too early. All right, I'm trying to keep the fun and funding, but sometimes it's hard, especially on a four day week. All right, I think that's it. Uh, Joanne, anything else that you had or? that you can think of that we need to cover? No, I was just flipping through my um, notes and lists. So no, I don't have anything. Just um, send me the link to yep. this when you have it and I'll get it up uh, and out to the members. Okay, we will do. Uh, please let us know if you have questions about any of the counts that we're collecting. And, and just a reminder, get those quarter four financials uploaded uh, so we can get them migrated. Uh, so we have everything we need to calculate funding, please, and the budgets. Um, okay, thank you all. Talk to you next month or sooner. <laughs>